All right, apologies in advance for the terrible GoPro audio you're about to hear. Uh, what I have coming up next for you is a pretty exhaustive unboxing and setup of the Hohem iSteady X. I'm going to make and upload a separate video with test footage from the gimbal, uh, samples of which you've been watching during this intro. But for now, it's unboxing and setup. All right, this is an unboxing of the Hohem iSteady X smartphone gimbal, uh, specifically when used with my new Galaxy S21 Ultra. I'm trying to build a little super compact, easy to assemble mobile movie making kit for the S21. I went through a lot of gimbals. I bought and returned a bunch from VH trying to find the right one. I actually bought this one first, but the clamp, though on the bigger side for smartphone gimbals, didn't fit my phone with the case that I had at first, which was one of the bigger, more rugged cases. And of all the smartphone gimbals that I went through, the only one that actually did fit a thicker, rugged case was the Moza Mini P, which is great. But I didn't want to keep the Moza Mini P because it takes too long to assemble and it is the biggest one of the smartphone gimbals. And that's specifically because it's actually not a smartphone gimbal. It's a large smartphone gimbal and a small mirrorless camera regular gimbal. So it's great. I'd like to get the Moza Mini P someday uh, once I start using a, a regular camera again, if I ever do. But just for something small and pocketable that could actually fit a case at all, I ended up with this. I bought this, didn't want to use it with the thick case, returned it. I got the Moza Mini P and its clamp fit the thick case, but it just took too long to assemble. I mean, it took too long to, to balance with every use and to slide the phone clamp in and it was kind of large, large to pack. Then I bought the Benro, the Benro 3XS or 3SX. And what I liked about the Benro was that it had a large battery. I think it had like a 20 hour battery, but its clamp was actually tiny. The Benro 3SX clamp didn't even fit the S21 Ultra without the phone case on it. So if you have a Galaxy S21 Ultra and you're looking for a gimbal, do not get the Benro 3SX. I don't know why these smartphone gimbals have such small clamps. The new DJI smartphone gimbal, the Osmo 4, I think it's called, its clamp is rather small. I didn't even bother with it because I think the, I'm not sure if you're really into the Osmo, you, you have to check for yourself, but I think the Osmo payload is too low for the S21 in the first place. I have square trade, so I figure I'll protect it with a smaller case. This is a Taurus, I think it's a Mars climber. T-O-R-A-S. It's pretty sleek and low profile and it does fit the iSteady X clamp. And it's less protective than one of the bigger rugged clamps, but I figured, you know, I mean, I have square trade. It's pretty strong glass and I'll just use this case, which is good, you know. It keeps the screen from touching the surface when you have it face down. And the sides don't cover the whole side of the screen because the side of the screen is bent, but the corners, are so high that the only way if you even if you drop the phone on its side the raised corners would protect it so you're only really at risk if you drop it like maybe on the corner of a curb or something or on some gravel so anyway my setup here is hopefully going to be the Hohem iSteady X with the S21 Ultra and a sleek case such as this one the Taurus one of the things I'm hesitant about is the payload of the Hohem which is High for a smartphone gimbal, 9.88 ounces, but it's still pushing the limit of the S21 with one of these sleek cases. It turns out even if I had a rugged case, the S21 with the rugged case that I had ended up being I think like 10.4 ounces, which is above the maximum payload of the iSteady X. But with this case, uh, the phone and the case together weigh 9.4, which is pushing the limit. That has me a little worried. But the limit's the limit, and if, if it's under the limit, it should, it should work okay, I'm hoping. You could lower the weight of the phone even more if you're crazy and you don't want to use a case at all. Or if you get one of the sleek, low-profile cases that doesn't have a stand, that would take some weight off too. I'm hoping to eventually get a mic system, a Saramonic mic system, which I'll review later if I get. And that should put it right at the weight limit. That'll put it at 9.8 ounces. I asked b &H how much the Saramonic mic receiver weighs they said 0. 
So that would make a 9.8 ounce phone case mic receiver on a gimbal that can only hold 9.88 ounces. So we'll see how that goes. I already unboxed it, but I just want to show you what it looks like in the box here. It's a pretty nice box. It doesn't come with a hard case, but this thing is so small and compact that a hard case would just be another bulky thing for you to have when you do want to pack it. Here's the gimbal, super small, which I love. The sheer small size of this is amazing. The gimbal stays folded, it doesn't swing around, it stays folded and locked. This is it unlocked. It is plastic. which some people don't like, but it doesn't matter to me much. Here's the phone with the case. I don't know if it's upside down or whatever because I'm not gonna use it just now, but I'm just showing you how the phone does fit in the clamp. It's not the smallest in the clamp that any phone could be, but it does fit with a case on, which I love. And it's super, it feels super secure. It doesn't move out when you shake it or anything like that. So the Home iSteady X could hold, can hold an S21 Ultra with one of the standard cases. As I said before, it doesn't come with a hard case as some other gimbals do, but that's okay to me because it's so small and pocketable. It locks snap shut when it's closed. So one of the things that the hard cases usually do is hold everything in place, but this doesn't need anything to hold it in place because closed it holds itself in place. And you know, you could always use one of your photography bags when you're traveling. Use one of those things and they come with the phone bumpers if you want some extra travel security. It does come with a nice bag. That's a great little bag to slide this thing into. Protect it from scratches at least. fits perfectly Let's see what else we got in here here's the instruction manual one of the warnings on I think it's either on the Amazon page or the B&H photo page is that it really wants you to activate your home account and the app account and connect it to the gimbal before you start or it says it won't work it also comes with charging cable which is nice it's a nice I love this length of short cable here looks like it's about a foot long I like those small foot long cables because they don't take up as much room when you pack them up to go and it comes with this little tripod. You can keep the tripod on, give you some extra grip while you're holding it. And if you need to pack it up small, don't include the tripod. And it's an all right tripod. So that's the unboxing. Great looking little gimbal. I forgot to mention it comes with this little wrist strap for safety. Safety for you. No, safety for your phone and for your gimbal. Very helpful. I'm going to attach that later. Attach that.
all on the floor. This audio is so good. Sorry for the GoPro audio. All right, so let's activate this. Very important to remember when you're opening it, and you're gonna use the motorized gimbal. Turn this screw here to lock this joint. And then everything else, one, two, and this here, three, is unlocked. And the motors will move. These three axes, axes, freaking axi, whatever, to keep the phone stable. But first, we gotta activate in-app. So I'm reading the instruction manual here. Long press the function button. When it's turned on for the first time, it will enter to be activated state. And the Bluetooth indicator light will flash red and green. So here's the function button to the right of the joystick. Red and green, there we go. All right. Turn on the phone's Bluetooth, open the app and log into the home page. Follow the prompt at the top and click connect. So I got my Bluetooth on. Here's the Hohem app, connect. All right. All right. Unfold the gimbal and tighten thumbs for more tutorial videos. <laughs> Scan gimbal BT. That's gimbal Bluetooth. Click on the device. I'm guessing this is the device. I like that it's Bluetooth and not Wi Fi. I don't understand devices that need a Wi Fi signal from a like a router. To operate like that makes no sense but so this is nice that it's Bluetooth pair I steady XBT connected connect to the unactivated gimbal activating now so I'm gonna put my registration info here See that? Just saw some automated movement. Looks like we're connected and activated. Eye steady activation, success, success. Home. And my fridge just turned on, so that's wonderful and noisy. Oh, it's making extra noise too. Oh, baby. All right, so I'm gonna try to put the phone in now. A little worry I have, which was a problem that I had with some other gimbals, was the clamp pressing the volume and power buttons. But it's not as much of an issue with this, I hope. I'm gonna make sure this is off before I put the phone in so that it doesn't struggle against me. I can make sure it's balanced on its own. Looks like it's on a little bit of a follow mode. 
which I love. That looks great, nice and smooth. So I'm gonna test it in the app, but then mostly outside of the app, because I don't really plan on using the app much, I just want it to be nice and steady. Start recording. Now this app interface comes up. And that looks pretty good. And I'm glad that it seems like it's holding the weight of the phone with no problem. So thankfully, like I predicted, the jaws of the clamp, once you get it in, don't interfere with the power or the volume button. It does cover the power button. You can still access the volume buttons. Once you get, when you're getting it in there, it might squeeze the power button. But once it's in and secure, the V shape of the claws stop it from continually holding down any buttons, which is great. And I'm in the regular camera app here, which I think I'm gonna use this mostly, just to take advantage of the features in the S21 camera app. Another great feature that I love is, if you lock all the axes with, with it open and with the phone clamped in, it serves as a selfie stick. There's a number of ways you can configure it. You could untighten this joint screw here and re-tighten it to get a little more even. And you could even lock this horizontal axis here. Keep this locked. Lock this axis and unlock the axis closest to the phone. And even after the battery dies, which is one of the weakest batteries of any gimbal, it has an eight hour battery. Even after the battery dies, you could in theory just use it as a single axis, sort of counterweight stabilizer. smoothing things out a little, it would have that floating effect that the big camera counterweight stabilizers have. But I would recommend, you know, when the battery dies, just use your phone or lock everything up and use it like a good selfie stick. Yeah, this is the regular selfie stick mode. You don't want to lock that axis unscrew this joint bring it down there's a notch right here halfway through then lock that lock this and there you got a selfie stick that's the normal selfie stick mode that Hohem recommends you could use it when you don't want to use up battery or maybe when your battery's dead or if you just need a tripod. I'm gonna do a test of it soon. I showed you how the phone fits in the case and next we're gonna do a real life test.